The 44 versus the 45. Two very dissimilar cartridges that fill two very specific roles. Dave and I are going to talk about it right now. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Now, I know what you're thinking. Did we go ahead and compare two other apples to oranges cartridges? Well, to tell you the truth and all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But being as this is Ammo.com, the best online ammo man retailer in the world, and would blow your head clean off with information, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do you feel like listening to some quality online content? Well, do you, friend? Dave, that has to probably be the best intro I have ever heard. That, uh, if for all of our, uh, our boomers out there, they'll all know what that is. That's a Dirty Harry reference right there. And uh, if you like shooting big calibers and you need to get some ammo, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon to ammo.com. But yeah, the 44 Magnum, obviously probably the most iconic movie scene, at least cop movie scene in history, in my opinion, with none other than Dirty Callahan and the Model 29 Smith & Wesson. Chris, I was just saying to you that if not for Dirty Harry, I don't know if people would even consider the 44 Magnum as a self-defense cartridge. I have to agree with you on that, Dave. I mean, from what I understand from Smith & Wesson, sales of the Model 29 absolutely skyrocketed after that movie. And, you know, everybody was really kind of on the 357, 38 kick. And then, of course, there is the cartridge that we're going to compare it to today, which is the none other than the most American cartridge out there, in my opinion, the 45 ACP, made by... You know, our Lord and Savior, John Moses Browning. I have to agree, you know, the movie really kind of pushed that into the mainstream, into the limelight, and everybody wanted it. And definitely John Browning designed a handgun cartridge for self-defense. And Elmer Keith was uh, designing deer hunting rounds. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Elmer Keith, obviously the father of the modern Magnum, as I like to refer to him as. And he was instrumental on a lot of uh, Magnums. Of course, the 357 Magnum being one of his most successful, and the 44 probably right behind it. Yeah, they were really looking to increase the power level on some of these revolver cartridges. And uh, they definitely achieved it, you know, starting with the uh, 44 Special. Definitely, we have a lot of our modern cartridges thanks to him, and the 44 Magnum being one of them really pushed the limits of power on this and almost double the kinetic energy of a 45 ACP on a 44 Magnum. That's some power right there. Now, the 45 ACP is no hothouse flower. That's a 230 grain bullet propelled to about 820 feet per second to give us some muzzle energy in the ballpark of right around the 350, 400 foot pounds, depending on your load which is more than ample for personal protection. Oh, yeah. Plus, plus, you get the advantage of a semi-automatic magazine-fed firearm, which, of course, reloads more quickly, and uh, it's just a little easier to operate all around. Then the 44 mag, Chris, what kind of stats are we talking about for that? Usually you're looking at something around like a 240 grain, uh, and if we're looking at like a jacketed hollow point, probably somewhere in the round of almost 1,200 feet per second and right around 750 foot-pounds or more, depending on your load. And that's overkill. Yeah, that, that's the one thing that I think is really good about the 45 ACP is not only is it shooting at subsonic speeds, but uh, you're going to have less likelihood of overpenetration, whereas with something big like a 44 mag, especially in a self-defense self situation, that's something you really got to worry about because you know every time you squeeze the trigger, that bullet has a lawyer attached to it. Uh, and that was something that an instructor told me once and it has stuck with me for a long time. So always be aware of what's behind your target if you ever have to employ a 44 Magnum in self-defense because that, that thing is cooking, to say the least. Now, of course, not all people are uh, you know worried about the two-legged variety of threat. And Fair. I think that's where the 44 Magnum kind of becomes more suitable for self-defense when you're uh, shooting people who might steal your picnic basket or, or maul you. Yeah, bare defense is definitely where the 44 mag shines. It, it has the power to punch through that really thick hide and the bones that uh, bears present. Definitely something you need to be prepared for. And a 44 mag has the power to push through it. Now, with something like that, you're going to want a hard cast bullet, typically lead. And I know a lot of people are finicky about shooting lead. 
you don't need to worry about it, especially with today's hard cast lead bullets, because you need that penetration. You need to penetrate deep into that animal because a bear is considerably bigger than a two-legged varmint. Let's put it that way. And as far as bear medicine is concerned, I mean, I'm picking the 44 mag 100 times over the 45. As much as I love my 45 ACP, yeah, just not really potent bear medicine. As a hunting cartridge in general, I don't hear the 45 ACP getting any love. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people who uh, test them out on hogs all the time, but I've certainly never seen a, a deer hunting specific 45 ACP round offered. You know, it just doesn't have the kinetic energy that you need to take down a deer or, you know, other large game. But the 45 ACP, ACP rather, falls way short of that. That, you know, really shows the difference between a hunting cartridge and a personal defense cartridge because it's two very different things. Now, the 44 Magnum, it's got what you need. And the 44 Magnum in a longer barrel, like in a little lever action or something like that, very handy, quick, and easy to, you know, to carry in the woods, it makes a really good deer rifle. Yeah, and plus you get the odd awesome cowboy advantage of having the same cartridge in your revolver and lever action, less to carry around, something to consider if you're a prepping-minded individual. I think the 44 Mag's biggest black eye against it as a self-defense round is its recoil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that one, Dave, because, I mean, we're talking at least two to three times the amount of free recoil as the 45 ACP. And there's a, a difference in feel in it as well. Since I've shot both, I can kind of comment to this. The 44 mag has a lot more of a snap to it, similar to a 40 Smith & Wesson, if we're going to put it back down to, you know, semi-auto cartridges. Whereas the 45 ACP has what people refer to as like a rolling recoil. Like it, it's, it's heavy, you feel it, but it's not like snap. It's, it's slow and it just kind of rolls over you and it's it's a lot easier to handle. And that's, you know, why the 45 ACP is as popular as it is with self-defense because you can get that bigger bullet, that 0.45 inch bullet, and you get pretty quick follow-up shots. Whereas with the 44 mag, it's going to take you at least twice as long to get back on target. Yeah, plus you have the added benefit of uh, 45 semi-autos spring absorbing some of that recoil. Yep. Uh, revolver just ain't gonna do that to you. It's just the power level between these two. You stick them next to each other and you can see, I mean, the difference. The 44 Magnum just towers over the 45 and that's, you know, one of the reasons why the recoil is so heavy. This brings us to, I think, you know, we talked about recoil. We do got to point out that Dirty Harry himself confessed to using special light loads and yep. Magnum Force. So even he wasn't firing a full power hunting ammunition. And that's, I think, a good thing to bring up, and this can honestly segue into, you know, differences in reloading. There's really a lot of flexibility with the 44 Magnum. The case is so big, and with, uh, you know, smokeless powder, you don't need a lot of it, especially all my hand loaders out there will be nodding their heads. It's like, yeah, you don't need as much smokeless as you would with something else. Uh, and it gives you that flexibility. You can load them light. You can load them heavy. Whatever you want to do, there's quite a wide range of powder charge, uh, you know, for the 44 Magnum where you can get that variability. And I think, you know, manufacturers will probably err on the side of being a little bit lighter as opposed to really giving that full 44 Magnum experience. Because if you look at some of the stuff that Buffalo Bore puts out, uh, oof. That is some potent, potent stuff. They like pushing the envelope on the 44 Magnum, and that is really hard to handle. And, you know, the beauty of the 44 Mag, just like the 357, is you can always run 44 Special in it, uh, which is going to be a lighter load. It's going to be easier to handle, won't penetrate as much, but still has more than enough power for any self-defense situation. And if oh, you yeah. want to up it to that 44 Mag, you've got the capability. Yeah. I mean, if honestly, 44 Special is so capable in its own right that I think you may just want to get a charter bulldog if you want to commit to that my only little warning if you want to get a 44 mag revolver uh pretty hard to find 44 special i'm not going to it's say true. impossible but compared to 38 special there ain't no comparison yeah you're not going to have a huge variety of choices if uh if you're looking for 44 special as far as ammo availability is concerned, though, I mean, the 45 is going to win this by a long country mile, if not oh more. Uh, you can find 45 everywhere. I mean, this was the, uh, the standard issue sidearm for the United States military from yep. 1911 until uh, the 80s. What was it? The 80s? 1986, mm -hmm. I think they replaced yep. it with the 9mm. Yep. So you got over 70 years of Americans learning how to, you know fire a handgun with this round it's, it's just not going to go away you're not going to top that it's always going to be super popular let's sum it up here uh dave what are your final thoughts on the 45 and the 44 mag 
simply put, 44 mag, too powerful for self-defense. It's going to be too much recoil, and God help your ears if you fire the thing indoors. Oh, yeah. If you're going through bear country, it's still a no-brainer. You want the 44 mag, or maybe something even a little more powerful. Uh, you know, because bears are very scary. Uh, for self-defense, get a 1911. You're going to be the coolest cat on the street, and you'll be as well-armed as your great-grandpa was when he was in France. Yeah, I can't disagree with you on that. Uh, you know, you're talking about more powerful handgun rounds, you know, especially for bears. I know a lot of people prefer like the 454 Casul uh, or even the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum are, you know, popular for bear country. But if you want that caliber compa compatibility rather between your lever gun and your handgun or your revolver, I mean, you can't beat the 44 Magnum for that multi-purpose, you know, applicability uh, for not only bringing home, you know, Bambi, but also taking care of, you know, Fozzie if he gets a little too frisky with you. But yeah, <laughs> you like that one? Yeah, we're going to get uh, copyright stricken by Disney. Probably. We'll get a YouTube strike for this one, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, the 1911, the 45, and even, you know, modern 45s like, uh, you know, the Smith & Wesson, you know, M&P 45 or the Glock 21 or the, you know, the Springfield XD 45, uh, all great semi-auto options for you for home defense, self-defense. If you do want to go to a subcompact, I highly recommend going to the range and trying it out first because, you know, just because you can handle a 45 and a 1911 does doesn't mean it's as comfortable in a subcompact so just go to the range and check that out before you make a commitment to purchase it but if you do need ammunition make sure you get it here at ammo.com click the link down in the description of the pinned comment make sure you leave us a like and subscribe and we'll see you out on the range